have it set up from Mardi Gras, Wukon.info, and you got back an email. Tango Alpha Whiskey, Sierra Alpha Edge Golf, Kilo Golf, Mike, India Echo 5-4. Send another email to the same domain using the numbers you find in the clues. If you get them all and in the right order, the fourth hint will be given to you. I think I've been reading Dr. Seuss recently. If you went to the website, and it turned out that if you went to um, the first website that I have, you couldn't traverse, you know, schmookon.info, that was just a subdomain on mine. You, you could, couldn't traverse the schmookon.info, you had to go up to GMARC and back down again. That was a basic web traversal challenge, but it was in there. And hats off to you, you solved puzzle too, and here's some more information. And the third clue, uh, I was working out in Hawaii at the time in the reserves, and I had an 808 phone number on my cell phone, so I just gave you a voice message. Well, if you took those two, th first three together, and you added them all together, what you would get is um, the first three rows, and then again, go column-wise, the magic words to say to G Mark are, give me white beads. Well, what is this 571428 thing? That was that fourth clue. Here's the fourth piece of four, so you need to look no more. So wait a minute, this is like a cart before the horse. No, not really, because the first three rows had the digits in there. 571428. What's significant about 571428 in that sequence? No, it's not the firing order of a V6 that's two extra cylinders. Four sevens, yes, come on up, grab something. One, four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, eight, five, seven, Repre repeating irrational number, rational number, whatever. It's been a while. So if you get that fourth one, it gave you the last set of stuff, go for it. Did you find this with ease or use the force of a brute? Why? Because you could brute force all six digit combinations, right? And eventually you'd get an autoresponder after you got hammered to this poor website. And so you got the information. So if someone came up to me and said, give me white beads, you got white beads. Well, the first team to do that, I got a call from a guy who says, hey, we solved your puzzle. Could you give me white beads? They say, great, come on, meet me in the lobby. And four people come down. Anybody here? No, they're off doing the lost puzzle again. So uh, exactly, uh, Jolly and Matt had all solved this thing. And they said, now I'm up this creek because I was going to give one winner, one round trip ticket, but four people won. So what should I do? What would you do? Give them all. Why not? So I gave them all to it. And then they spent their time then like this year, trying to solve a lost puzzle. So we're sitting there at the closing ceremony, and Jolly's saying, like, any hints? I said, yeah, start saving your money for next year because you're not going to get a free ticket. <laughs> and I was going to say, by the way, that 2008 DEF CON puzzle remains unsolved because I had a DEF CON puzzle that was like this. Those were the cards I gave out, except <clears throat> there's a rather smart person in here who solved it. There you are. You, you don't have to identify yourself if you don't want to, but you could. You want to stand up? Somebody else wanted to stand up, right? Going? Going? You don't have to do this anymore? Somebody else? Somebody else? Oh, nope, somebody else did not get it. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to let you finish, Gene Mark, but I just got to say that Dan Kaminsky had one of the best talks of all time. <laughs> what can I say? All right, I think somebody just advanced one around the scavenger hunt. So anyway, this fine gentleman went ahead and solved that thing, so he's out here on my dime as well. And uh, So you can create your own crypto, but be careful, it's like packing a parachute. Unless you know what you're doing, you can really screw it up. One of my first jobs, when I started my business in 1988, National Security Corporation, sound like a pretty cool name, why? I wanted to go work for the National Security Agency, if you heard my previous talks, and found out that in the Navy, I couldn't convince the detailer to send me there. They said, the Navy has no need for computer security. You need to go back out to sea. This is true, it's 1984. So I was like, well, what do I do? I want to do this, I want to do that. So I left active duty, one of the reserves, and then decided to go ahead and do security on the outside. Why? Because I went to the Fort Meade after three years, I have to go look for a job. So I couldn't work for the National Security Agency, so I started National Security Corporation. So first company I had, they had some crypto. And they encrypted a whole big database of corporations around America with credit histories. I can't mention their client name even today. And they said, we're going to have this newfangled invention in the late 80s called a CD-ROM. So instead of printing up directories, we're going to put on a CD, but we don't want anybody just exporting the entire database and then creating mailing lists and then doing stuff. Because what they used to do, seriously, back in the 80s, is every year this thing would come out, and people would hire a boiler room full of people just bang, 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 and retype that stuff in there. They didn't have scanners. So they want to do this. I said, okay, fine. Well, we're going to hire you. We're going to give you 80 hours. You go ahead and prove that our crypto is good. Well, what are you going to do? We'll just give you a sample of it. Well, I took it home, cracked it, came back in, supposed to meet with the, the boss. But the guy hired me. He has his boss and his boss's boss there. And it's like, oh, gee whiz. I cracked a crypto and now I've just embarrassed my client. 
And he had a pretty good recovery. He said, oh, Mr. Big, don't worry about it. We were just checking this young man out to make sure that he was actually uh, pretty good. So it turned out that he was using the decoy cryptography and did very well. So he's going to solve now the real crypto. And by the way, kid, you don't get any more time. So in the remaining 40 hours, I cracked the other crypto. <laughs> and I assembled a mailing list, which is their greatest um, nightmare. And I presented that to them. And I said, you know, you really should use something called the data encryption standard because back then it was only you know, it was the thing to use, and then they were like, well, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that, but oh, by the way, you just embarrassed me a second time before my boss, so we'll figure it out ourselves. So I went back there a little bit later, uh, like a month later, trying to do a sales call. It's like, well, how's it going? Oh, yeah, we got this code, we're implementing it. It says, right, where are you storing the key? Ah, we figured that out. We got like a 4,000 character block, and we just stored it in there somewhere, no one's gonna find it. I said, you ever hear anything about bit parity? Because des keys have that parity bit in there, so I have to look for uh, eight bytes in the row with the same parity, with the odds of that are what, one and two to the eighth? Hmm. 256, there's 4K, so how many times did that go in there? 4, 8, 12, 16, expect to value 8. Eight tries, I'll crack your crypto every time. Sure you don't want some help? No, 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 we got it. <laughs> so best I know, they're still doing that. So ShmooCon last year, went over to Bruce and Heidi's house, and uh, if you went to there, I don't know, anybody do the East Coast trips? East Coast. East Coast, all right, yeah, I got my goon, so that's good. So anyway, put Morse code on the rim of each of the badges as well as a barcode, because it was like a barcode contest. Because the year before, someone brought in a badge and they put barcode on it, and someone thought that would be cool. And so they figured, why don't we do all these barcodes? And so everything had a barcode. But the problem is, because it was printed at an angle and it's a digital image, guess what happened to the barcodes? And most of the really high-res scanners wouldn't figure it out. If you had a low-res scanner, it scanned very nicely. But if you cracked the Morse code, and that little red X, by the way, I made a mistake. Nobody caught it, but I didn't eventually, but it was too late, the badges got printed. Actually, somebody did catch that. This was the left border, that was the right border, and that's the barcode. Who is here good at reading barcodes? What does that first barcode say? Anybody look at the program and look at the CD and... Well, what it does, I'll, I'll spare you the work, is this is what it wrote into. So you had... Uh, Left border was Mooseltoe, Wixcribib, and then Moosel Defense, and Chocolate Moose, and Mooseketeers, and Room with a Moose, and Be Anonymous, Moosey Fate, and Moose Nugget, and these barcodes. Well, the first column looks like what? Well, one through eight. Helps you get them in order, just in case you can. How many possible orders are there of eight different badges if you didn't have that? How many possible ways can you arrange eight things? Not eight factorial. 60. How about two to the eighth? <laughs> no schwag for you. And these things are actually legitimate checksums from the Iranian barcode. But what's stuff in the middle? What's this one, one, two, three, five, eight, one, three, two, one? What does that look like? Fibonacci. So many people said that I don't have enough schwag for you. So somebody raise hands. I'll throw it in the general direction. If your hand's not up, don't keep it. All right. Fibonacci sequence. What's unique about the Fibonacci sequence? For those who didn't study math or were asleep in it. Well, one plus one is two. Plus one is three. Plus two is five. Plus three is eight. Plus five and eight are 13. Eight and 13 are 21 and so on. And it builds up and there's lots of different things you can do with that. But it tells you something that there ought to be something going on in there. So if you look at the table of values, that I created, and we just go ahead and we transcribe all eight badges. Again, note the common element. You've got to socialize here. You have to look, roll around look at other people's badges. And you get people coming in staring at your chest, and it's like, are you looking at my badge or what? Well, okay. And you end up with all these different combinations. But what's the stuff on the right? Well, it's just padding, right? It doesn't matter. Well, look, there's Gmart. But guess who else showed up in here? <laughs> that was not planned, honestly. That just... <laughs> That came up and it's like, oh, wow, this is pretty neat. It's a sign. It's a great puzzle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that, he, he appeared in the middle of my crypto puzzle on column 13. <laughs> so what we had at the end is like the telomeres. What's a telomere? And your DNA. That's all the stuff that when the telomere starts to unravel because it's like the, the padding at the end, it's a slack space in your file. Telomere is gone. What happens? You, well, not die immediately, you start to reproduce your cells incorrectly, they turn into cancer cells, they get big, and then you die. 
So if you keep your telomeres long, you can live a lot longer. That's the current theory. So looking left to right on these telomeres, there's uh, some stuff in there. I've had Bruce and Heidi, and I put an X and an O in there, but I spelled Heidi's name wrong. I didn't have to, but I did. It was stupid. Uh, and so then there's things that are left. How many letters are left? Who's good at counting? Sixteen letters are left. And um, how could that be significant? I don't know. Let's go back here. How many columns have I got? <laughs> Sixteen columns. What am I going to do with those Fibonacci numbers? Maybe they're offsets. Think of a shift register. It's the first eight terms. There are eight badges. There are eight indices. What to do with them? Again, a lot of commonality. When you see the same number show up over and over again, it's usually not a coincidence. The only coincidence that ever came in here was the appearance of Jesus in my puzzle. So what we do is we take these things and let's start shifting them. The well, first row, we'll leave 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and 21. And if we have that as a starting position up top and then modulo 16, so 21 becomes what, mod 16? Yep, comes 5. We shift these things over a little bit. And this guy wraps all the way around, and you get this. And now, if we take out the G mark and the Bruce and Heidi, you see one extra letter per column. Why would you think they just happen to distribute perfectly into one each per column? Because they probably needed something to get there, right? Each column gets a spare letter, so what do you think I might do with a column? Come on, this is some goodies up here. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? It's a pattern, but it's padded. I already padded it, so what do I do with it now that it's padded? Come on, you guys got a lot to win crypto puzzles. You got to think like a cryptographer. It's already aligned. We already realigned them. We padded it, and we're ready to go ahead and... Yeah, solve it. Okay. <laughs> Give me $20. That's a negative puzzle. Steganography. No, it's not steganography. We go ahead, we turn them into numbers, so we can then do what to the numbers? Add them together. Add them together. Who said that? All right, come on up and help yourself to some really cool NSA swag. Because letters don't add very well in your head, but numbers add pretty nicely. And so if we add by column, what do you think we get? Well, we get big numbers. Like these. Have problems making decisions? Uh, well, yes and no. Um, okay, so we add up all these columns, we get 16 different columns, we get all these answers. Well, what do we do with the sum? They're too big. What's the 113th letter of the alphabet? We don't have one. So what do you think we do with them? Rot 26, mod 26 them. And now we go ahead and get these numbers. All right, what do we do with those numbers? Turn them back into letters. Wow, we're doing great. Okay, this is like a really tough code. So, take all those numbers, turn them into letters, and this became the final pig Latin puzzle. They're the person who came up with the solution, they won a round trip ticket to come out here. By the way, the very lame Schmukan badge puzzle, which was weird because it involved like a PDP-8 paper tape punch and you had to assemble it and you ran the program on a PDP-8 simulator, you had to take the output, run it through like some Enigma si simulator and then you got some answer and they gave you a 8 gig memory stick. It's like, dude, do my puzzles, they pay better. Who kind of sick mind, this was uh, at Bruce and Heidi's paper, uh, squared paper here. Uh, actually they didn't have any, I asked if they had any graph paper, he went out and he downloaded graph paper off the internet. <laughs> and uh, that's what we get. So. That's coming up with the puzzle. There's the original notes. It's not too tough. But you want to make it interesting. You want to put enough phases and stages in there and things like that. So anyway, the same sick mind that came up with that came up with this one. Today's puzzle for today, tomorrow, and Sunday to see if you can win it. It's a DEF CON level challenge, but it's a good one. It's an easy one and you know as you make progress because all of a sudden, like a tumbler, a click, it unlocks. It's not like you have to get all the pins before all of a sudden you figure it out like my ninja badge, but you'll get there from here. And so here's the first important hint. Look for gold on the DCCD. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? What's a DCCD? Anyone? 
All right, good. So you're not you're not asleep. I got mine on here somewhere. So go look for gold on it. That'll get you going. Now we're going first. You don't have a laptop. That's a little bit of a tough puzzle, but.